vitamin k prophylaxis it's important to have knowledge of why we give and what to do if the parents do not want the injection so it's aimed at preventing early and late onset hemorrhagic disease of the newborn so there is poor placental transfer of the vitamin k and breast milk is low in vitamin k as well the function of the vitamin is to gamma carboxylate the glutamate residues in factors 2 7 9 and 10 these are important clotting factors and protein C and S, which uh, help with clotting uh, as well. So these factors are inactive without the above change. So if vitamin K is low, you have an increased risk of bleeding. The incidence is variable. The early onset bleed, which usually happens within the first three to five days, uh, has an incidence which is higher at 0.1 to 0.5%. Late onset is not common. It's one in 15,000, but it's a more serious condition because it can present with intracerebral bleed which unfortunately can have long-term problems. Uh, if the mother is on medications like anticonvulsants uh, or warfarin, there can be an accelerated form of the early hemorrhagic disease, which can be serious. So vitamin K should be given very early in these cases. The intramuscular route is a preferred route, just one milligram intramuscular in term babies and uh, 0.4 milligram per kilogram in preterm babies is given. It's important to give the intramuscular dose even in the preterm babies because of the depot effect. Uh, because of the depot effect in the muscle, because it's a fat soluble vitamin, uh, it continues to release over time. And that's why one injection is enough for both early and late onset disease. If we are using the oral route due to parental choice, uh, repeated dosing will be needed because it's not having this depot effect. A two milligram per dose can be used on days 0, 7 and 28 as a minimum, but you can use it more frequently as well. Uh, the same intramuscular uh, preparation is used for oral use as well. In terms of G6PD deficiency, there is a possible risk because conakion is listed in the risk medicines, but we don't usually see any effects. And because this condition is not known in most of the babies at birth, it only comes through the newborn screening. It's important to give the vitamin K as well, except if there is a family history of G6PD deficiency where a previous baby had hemolysis with vitamin K. There are theoretical concerns from past reports which were not substantiated of uh, cancer-like reactions, sarcoma and so on, but they are not at all uh, concerns at 